And we welcome you into Atlanta Silverbacks Park in Atlanta, Georgia, for what should be a fun friendly here at the park as the Silverbacks host Middlesbro FC's under 23 side. And hey there, everybody. Thanks for joining us with the usual Silverbacks cast of characters. He's John Nelson, and I'm Justin Hanover. The Silverbacks NPSL dream ended a week ago. Today, though, John, we've got a matchup against an English Premier League under-23 side, a Middlesbrough team that comes in off a preseason couple of friendlies, 8-0 and 5-2 victors, and now they come to the States, flew over the ponds, and, John, it's a three-game set here, and it all begins tonight at the park. Okay, first and foremost, yes, we will keep you up to date on what's going on in the NPSL playoffs with action going on. We're into the semifinals. After tonight, you might have your final fours and all that kind of stuff. We'll keep you up to date as we go. Now, to the present tense and what's going on here. 19 hours on a plane, on a bus, and into a hotel after that second exhibition preseason match that Middlesbrough had. They came over here. Tonight is the first of three matches in 10 days. After tonight's match, they go up to Chattanooga to take on Chattanooga FC midweek. Then they go up to the Tri-Cities area of Bristol Kingsport Johnson City to take on the Tri-Cities Club. Three matches in 10 days. And in talking to the Middlesbrough staff, they want to win all three. That's just how it is. And when you have Georgia Tech fans hanging out here. You know, you got yellow jackets that you have to contend well with. Done. We're going to fight the weather. Hopefully, we'll get this one in. But it's an interesting set for a side that practices right next door to the first year side in the Premier League in Middlesbrough. And a lot of guys we spoke to the coaches, a lot of these guys have potential to be on that team in the near future. Speaking, though, of the home Silverbacks, NPSL season ended last week 2 0 in Miami. NPSL season started with a 2-0 defeat in Reading a couple of months ago. In between, though, John, we saw some high-quality soccer. We didn't know what we would get originally. We saw guys like Pedro Pola, Joao Johanning, Abraham Lansana, the captain, Mitch Garcia. Comebacks, grit, determination. Really a great season in the end. And tonight, they go for contracts. These guys are out there wanting to be professionals once again and the litmus test is high. This could determine a lot for a lot of these Silverback players. Yeah, and when you have elements like this, you're exposing yourself to an entire different world of soccer content, of soccer play, of soccer coaches. So when you have windows open like this for a lot of the stars that we were able to see in this particular Atlanta Silverback season, it opens a window, it could open a door. Do they kick it in? That's the big question. So we're coming up in moments. It's the Silverbacks, Middlesbrough FC under 23 in what hopefully will be a phenomenal friendly that the fans, John and I, will love. It's the finale, and it's coming away. Lineups and kickoffs next.
And back here at the pitch, John Nelson, Justin Hanover. You see Middlesbrough FC under 23 in the red kits. The Silverbacks in white. John, what do we have? As they announce the starting lineups, let's dive right into it. Visitors first. All right, visitors first. We will start in the net. It is number one, Joseph Fryer. He will be starting now. The starting lineups that we're going to give you, you're going to see a lot of players getting a lot of reps. So there's going to be plenty of swapping out. This is what we think it's going to be for starters. Maybe 45 minutes, things change at the half. They're going to play a 4-3-3, which is what we were heard in talking to the coaches before the game started. Your back line is going to be Halliday, McGee, McGoldrick, and Kitching, 7-6, 17, and 15 across the back. The captain and the birthday boy, Robbie Tinkler, is part of that midfield. He turns 20 today. He's been at the academy since he's been a 13-year-old. Lewis Maloney, and you will also have Callum Cook as your midfielders up front. It is Chapman. Number 32. Chapman. It is Fuster, Bradley Fuster, and it is Northern Ireland under 19 national Tom McAloon, who had a hat trick in their first friendly this season. So from the back, it is one in goal, 7-6, 17, 15 at the back, 19, 3, 16 in the middle, 10, 12, and 11 up front. Time for our national anthem. Well done, Cassidy Wallace, moments away 
from starting. Let's go after John, the Atlanta Silverbacks starting 11. And once again, the starting 11 as we have it, we anticipate a lot of swap outs today. Four at the back, but Amakante will be in goal today. Four at the back, it'll be Mitch, Paco, Sergeant Njai, large and in charge, and high reds, 1845, four and two. Midfield, Lansana in the hold at eight. You'll have Diwa and Pedro there as well. 13, 10, and 8. Tiago, 33, part of the forward brigade, along with Joa, number 11, and Anthony Takpa getting the start up front. But once again, we anticipate 40 minutes at the break, somewhere in there, there's going to be a lot of swaps. That's the 11s as we have them just for you. Yes, and you said at Middlesbrough literally has scripted who's going to be in the first half, who's going to be in the second half, barring something strange or injury-related. The Silverbacks, I think, as well, may go a little deeper with the starting 11, but we will see guys we maybe haven't seen. We'll see guys that have been training. It's going to be a fun night, John. It's a litmus test. Yep. I mentioned it earlier. Solid season. We saw the best come out from this team. We saw them come back in numerous occasions here. They gutted things out. Now they're up against a talented team, a team with more blue chippers, a team with guys that may go on to do some great things. Now's the time you really start looking at the Silverbacks and say, who's going to get the contract? Who's going to come up big against the big boys? And how do you respond on a day like this? This is your opportunity to work your way into the eyes and ears and social media platforms for the next level. See, be seen, act, and be acted upon. It is how you respond on days like this when all it is is a friendly no points on the line, no playoff positions on the line. How do you roll from here? And it'll be interesting to see how the Silverbacks respond today. If you're a Silverback in that white kid and you have a great match, mm -hmm. you take this tape and it works wonders for you. That you're doing this correct. against a legitimate Middlesbrough under 23 team. As you astutely mentioned, they are now in what's called the Premier League Two Second Division that can move up to the Premier League Two First Division if things go well this year. And the way that they have rebranded the under 21, under 23 overseas, if I am interpreting it correctly, you have those two divisions. There is no relegation from PL no, from correct. the second correct. division of PL2. It's just that PL1 and PL2 will be going back and forth with each other in a promotion relegation setup. But once again, as we said in the open, Middlesbrough, the guys that you're watching today, they practice one field over from Ator Karanka's bunch that are starting in the Premier League in two weeks' time. And we're starting right now. And a little bit of rain on this field. Led Santa gives it away early on. Here comes trouble and a heavy touch in the end. There's Harry Chapman, who was on loan at Barnsley last year with a good opportunity that goes astray. Little nerves maybe early on for the Silverbacks. You know what you're up against. It rained before, John. The pitch is going to be a little bouncy. The balls are going to go all around. So not great conditions early on. And you're going to have some skittish nature with the ball it's going to take some funny bounces and it's how do you respond in these situations having to adjust on the fly and this middles row team coming in off that 5-2 win they were up 5-1 till the death basically so an easy win and a great last 45 coach jenkins told us and then the eight nil victory earlier when coach jenkins basically said he was in awe of his team's performance in that first match the way their fitness level was so soon and you mentioned that the hat trick, the three goals from Tom McAloon, the Northern Irishman. Here's Chapman. Robbie Tinkler, happy birthday, Robbie. You see number 19. See how much possession the Silver X are able to maintain here. Maybe if this was a normal NPSL match, they'd sit back a little bit. Njai coming over. Well done by Sarge. Callum Cook, number 16. I don't think in a friendly, though, you necessarily want to sit back. No. You want to entertain, right? Yeah, yeah you want to entertain, but at the same time, you Smart. also want to make sure that your abilities are shown and focused upon properly as that ball gets all the way to the back line. And, and they're going to call, that was not a pass back to Amith. The referee is going to call an indirect kick there as if it was. I understand what just happened. It was played back to Injai. 
and I don't necessarily blame Conte. I understand what he was thinking. Unlucky, and in the end, a dangerous set piece coming here for the visitors. You saw what Bradley Fuster did instantly. He turned to the official at that whistle and was like, okay, that was an improper touching. So this is going to be an interesting shot right here just inside the big box. See Niall McGoldrick, the center defender, coming in. He's being guarded by the six foot seven Anthony Takba. And they play it back. Shot just goes wide. Good to see Amit back, by the way. Talk about somebody that has had injury problems all season long, from the shoulder to the knee to whatever else happened. But he worked hard, John. Amit was running during training sessions, really worked hard. It's great to see him back. Potential to play for his national team. Still not 100%, so he's going to take these goal kicks with his left foot, naturally a righty. Chapman, well won though. Pedro plays it wide. Tiago, you see it's a tough touch. A little bit of wind, a little bit of wetness. And Lancena goes back to Ameth. Ball goes out for a silverback throw. We welcome in, by the way, all of the fans of Middlesbrough. Yep. Some people on Twitter saying, are you guys really posting this? Are you really going to have a stream? Well, yes, we are. That's what we do here with the silverbacks. So welcome to our friends from across the pond. All right, so let's do the math quickly. So the oh, match no. started. Again, math? Yes. Uh, match started a little after 10 o'clock local time. Not too late. Nope. Joining, leading the Silverbacks with eight goals on the season, back to Lancena. Abraham, the natural six. Done his job all season long, professionally holding. And two points quickly about the weather as we go forward, unless this turns into a joust that could go sideways. Overlap coming down this left side, running hard is Kitching. Here's Mark. Left footed cross, Paco. The cross just goes a bit far from Chapman. And with the rain that has been happening here, it was a little heavy before the teams came out. It's kind of lessened a little bit, but what it has done is when you make contact with that ball on that pitch, it is not pure, it is a thud. Yeah. You hear the noise and it is a thud. It is not a pure sound. And also, as you'll notice with these kicks, the ball is held up and the way that for those watching for the first time. This is a field that's in a bowl. And things get held up as the wind will swirl. Good touch by Johanny. Here's Pedro, he's got seven goals on the season. 15 combined for these two. And well tackled, silverback throw. A little bit of a wind as you were saying. I think in the favor, you think it's more swirling because versus anybody's favor? Yeah, because if it's going to come, it's going to be in Middlesbrough's favor in right. the first half, yes. but it swirls because of that berm that we have as you're watching to the right-hand side. Diwa. Douglas can beat anybody one-on-one. -on -one. Gets on that left foot, and, and they're going to call just a goal kick. Good technical ability here from the Silverbacks. Joa and Diwa, we've seen it at times from Lancena and Pedro. The goal trick goes back to the keeper in Fryer. And Those Preston. two, the only ones, John, who as of right now are slated to play the full 90. We'll see how it works out, however. And we got plenty of stories with these Middlesbrough guys, so it'll be uh, a great learning experience for all of us here today with our visitors here. Lancena tries to play to feet. Takwa doesn't come back. Well won by McGoldrick. Here comes Lancena. Joa has a big switch if he wants him with Tiago. And he goes that way. And here is Tiago with the head. Well done Lancena, Joa and Tiago. Got elevated over Jordan McGee that time, the Scotland under 21 star. And here's Chapman. Ameth comes out. <laughs> and the first person he looks at is the official. Very aggressive goalkeeper is Conte. And the left foot punts.
Jelani's gonna go one on one. Here's Joa. And a good hard tackle. And there's Poles. Here's Pedro. Garcia screaming for a John on that far side, wanting to switch. Now he finally gets it. Mitch, the captain here for Atlanta, so stellar this year. That monster goal a couple of weeks ago at the death to tie the championship game. There will be, by the way, a trophy presentation following the match right after this ends. The Silverbacks will raise the South Atlantic trophy, and I'll tell you, it's a big, good-looking piece of silver metal, whatever that thing is. <laughs> it is a large piece. Paco, one of the new additions on the Rwandan national team. Here's Poles. Better play here the last couple of minutes. I think it just took settling down and getting adjusted to the pitch and getting adjusted to each other. First time competitive back in a while. Yes. Kitchen to Cook. Cook goes long. It's going to be tough to get it on a long ball. You see already that back line, the fellas in red, John, extremely competent, obviously, in the air, and they're winning most of those balls. Maloney. Here's Cook, they look to change the point of attack. One, two, and now going the other way, Lancetta. Tapa yet to get his feet really wet in this thing. It's a nice pun. Well, we saw <laughs> last week, <laughs> let's just say they'd be swimming laps on this pitch a week ago. If you didn't see it, some interesting times one week ago the Nigerian national team had a friendly against the Charleston Battery as Middlesbrough comes in the box and Sarge able to clear it away to Mitch. And this pitch, let's just say it didn't drain well Saturday night and they had to play it Sunday morning at 10 a.m. So you had a choice, either going to services or coming to catch a little football. I think we had a little bit of both. Nice crowd came out because uh, there was the opportunity to see some of the uh, Atlanta United signees yes. and local products and homegrowns that they were taking a peek at. And they acquitted themselves well. Lagos Kunga, Okongbo, bunch of good players. Andrew Carlton, Jeffrey O2. Yes, Carlton, very good touch. Here comes Pedro, three on four if he hurries. Oh, cheeky little chip, why not? Good idea from Polez. What do you want to bet he saw the play from the ICC from early this morning with Juve and Melbourne victory? Maybe we'll ask him after. <laughs> or maybe he was thinking Carly Lloyd. Or the NPSL goal three weeks ago. Yeah. That was from the keeper in his own 18, though, on the punt. Yep. That's got to win NPSL goal of the year, right? No question. That reminds me, when I go home, I have to vote for my 11 of the year. Yeah, see, I'm not in pristine company the way you are. I'm, <laughs> I'm just the plebe around here. I don't even know what voting for awards are around, you know, these parts. Spell plebeian. P-L-E-B-E-I-A-N? Very good. Is, is that right? Yeah. Oh, there's a move around. Trouble coming. Kitching crosses. Garcia. And Diwa off the shoulder. Well done by Douglas. Paco. And clear. But you see where the field tilts pretty much is about the 40 yard line on the flip side. Majority of the possession to the folks in red. And Tinkler goes forward. Here's Chapman, one on one on Resendiz. Robbie with the cross. Headed away and cleared by Sarge. Good attack. 
they are most dangerous, John, in these first 12 minutes plus are those balls from the midfielders going through. And you're seeing what Paco and Sarge are doing on the back line so far. Keep an eye on four and 37 white. Yes. It's those long 20, 25 yard through balls that have been doing the trick so far. Atlanta's sinking back a bit. Here's Cook. Callum goes long. And Garcia well done. Great work with the chest directed to Conte. And we'll see what happens in transition. Pedro's look very active so far. Love what I'm seeing from number 10 here in Atlanta. And here he is again. I think your 10 and 11 white will be doing a lot of one twos today. Indeed, John Nelson, Justin Hanover live at Atlanta Silverbacks Park. It is the Atlanta Silverbacks in Middlesbrough FC, their under 23 squad. A lot of these guys have been up with the big boys on loans. A lot of these guys will be with the big boys eventually. That's the plan. We're looking, John, at some of these are just 17, 18 year old young kids that are just phenomenally talented. Good ball played in. Conte comes out, flag goes up. Much to the chagrin of Callum Cook. And as the story with a lot of these players at Middlesbrough, Cook scouted as an eight year old, <laughs> part of the England under 16, under 18 bunch. Great one two touch there off the flick, and that the flag went up on that one. Look Cook like obviously call. not happy with it. Would have been the first goal of the match. And remember, Middlesbrough in that last match, a rough early go of it in the 5-2 win. They allowed the first goal. And coach was telling us, Paul Jenkins, that they had a slow start, but then the boys got back in the swing of things later on. Good turn by Garcia. Paco's been so good for this team. Late addition in the season. Came a little bit more than midway through. Been a rock back there. Cook. Pitching on this left side. They try and go two on one on Resendiz. Chapman. Cross. And that's Ooh. trouble and it goes over. <laughs> Amith almost came out, or I should say he did come out. But got this communication. Late. Yeah. Paco got there first, contact to try to get it out of the way, ended up going backward. But backwards elevated enough to where it's only a corner and not a goal surrendered. Paco's played in Kenya. I believe Thailand as well. That's how he, I think, knows Gabriel Obatola, OJ. Guarding against the short, but they went ahead and gave it. Two on one here on Tiago. They establish the box, played in. Low cross, Garcia, trouble off the crossbar. Middlesbrough on the front foot. Let's take a look at this again, John. There's your two on one off the short. Now watch, kind of gets lost in the pinball machine in the box there. Entry, high shot off the top of the bar by Jordan McGee and then cleared. He was on loan from Hearts in Scotland. Maybe another inch and that hits the lower bar and comes down. Really can't get much closer than that. Still attacking on this left side. Chapman. Good possession here. Tinkler. You see a little bit of the class of Middlesbrough. Really exerting themselves right now in these last few minutes. Atlanta pushes that back line up as far as they can. Great ball to feet. Using the width, Cook plays it wide. Garcia defending. Cross, trouble, goal. 
And the attack kept happening, John, and eventually he knew what would happen. Brad Fuster with the first goal of the match. In the Take another minute. look and see how it ended up in the box. Far side, double team. Beat to the end line, head. And Sarge just didn't go with Fuster in the end. And it results in a 1-0 Middlesbrough advantage. The pressure was there. They were on the front foot. You knew at some point you weren't going to be able to continue to hold them down. If you screw the 22-year-old striker, and you'll see a lot of this with the Middlesbrough bunch, is that he's a born local, playing for his boyhood team. Puts a marker on the board on the road. And most are locals. Yeah, as you just mentioned, you will see in the second half. A lot. Jao Morelli, who's from Brazil. Great story we'll there. Arnel Jakopovic who's from Austria, just played in the championships with the, I believe, under 19. Those are pretty much the rare exceptions of guys that are not local boys. So it's good to see, it really is. Still on the attack. Certainly a lot of firepower on Middlesbrough. As we mentioned, 13 goals in the first two matches. And this is just preseason. Mm -hmm. They're a week and a half in. Yep. Three matches here in the States. They'll go home, have a week or two, and then they start this new Premier League Two Division Two. And to your point, the Thornaby match that ended up 8-0 was only 2-0 at the break. So slow first halves, mm -hmm. really. Yep. I think they were level at one in the next match, or maybe up 2-1. But the second halves have really been where the, the cream has risen. And put the pedal down against yeah. Whitby to win 5-2. And as you mentioned, that second goal by Whitby was pretty much at the death. Had a 5-1 advantage. Pogba fighting. Here's Pedro. Wanted to tee that up, just didn't line up properly. Lancetta. Good win back by Abraham. Nobody in a position in that box. Mitch wanted that cross. Diwa, one on one here. On Maloney. Douglas. Big cross, and Joa tries to get up, cannot. We've mentioned it so many times, but once again, special thanks to the general manager, Fode Dalla, his partner, Alvin Glay, for being able to set up this matchup, able to bring in Nigeria's Olympic team, Dream Team 6, really builds instant credibility for this organization, John. And when you have opportunities like that, it builds credibility for the organization, and it also showcases your players on a global scale. Sure. And while only social media and video can do only so much, when you have the opportunity to have up close and personal contact for more than just dropping in, showing up, and turning around and leaving. It's valuable for the growth of a franchise. And when you want these guys to be sold and go to higher leagues, it gives it instant credibility to watch video against Middlesbrough or mm -hmm. against Nigeria's Olympic team. Yep. Clubs like Tobacco Road and the Railhawks NPSL and Myrtle Beach, very good. But some people will scoff their noses. They'll say, well, that's just in that fourth division. What can you do against our type of competition? Well, here you go on video is against your type of competition if you can come through in these scenarios. Both teams wanting that. Silverbacks will get the call. Yeah, Johnny Resendez was close to touching it, pulled back at the last, and let it go through. You can be a single-A batter and destroy single-A pitching, and people will still say, who cares? But if you then go up against, as we see the foul there, against Takba, committed by McGoldrick, but then if you go against suddenly an elite pitcher, 
then you know, okay, he can hit that that level. Yeah, if you're hitting 370 against the elites, it's a whole different thing than yes. hitting 370 against the same kind of competition. It brings that instant credibility. Oh, and there's a giveaway from Lansana. Here comes Paco. Venturing forward, haven't seen that much. Foul is called right around 25 yards or so from goal. Whistle on McAloon that time. And Paco is a tall drink of water to bring down. We've seen him, we've seen Georgie Kula venture forward like that, both big time shots. Just not able to tee it up there. So here's Mitch on the ball. I would assume he's gonna look for the big fella in Anthony Takba. You see him right around six, seven in the middle of the frame as the referee applies the shaving cream as you like to call it. Mm -hmm. Garcia, good ball in. And it looks like Injai, I believe, on the foul. Or and again, Middlesbrough plays it quickly. Why not? Oh, that should be Atlanta ball. No. And they missed that one, yeah. Joe Anning's right. Joa kicked it off the foot of Kitching. Tough to see, but he did. You see Atlanta sulking back a little bit, giving the middle part of the pitch and then closing down around the 35. Everybody behind the ball except for Toskala. Approaching minute number 25, Brad Fuster with the lone goal in the 18th. John Nelson, Justin Hanover live from Atlanta Silverbacks Park. And what is the finale for the 2016 version of the Atlanta Silverbacks? Overloading this left side again. Kitching. Pressure by Tiago and he gets called for the foul. Yeah, Kitching's been active so far in the first half. Academy for uh, the Borough as a nine year old. And it's the impressive. family, season card holders. So once again, you see that local interest. That is what a lot of people in this country, John, are screaming for. Besides Pro Rail, yeah. obviously, that's mm -hmm. what a lot of the talk on social media is these days. but. You've got to build up the academy. You've got to have these kids at age nine being able to play almost professionally. People will say we're rotting away our talent at these young ages just playing with guys like you and me. Nothing doing there, Maloney. McAloon again. Certainly don't want to see cards in a friendly. A no, little I persistent infringement so far for McAloon. But I think really this is going to be viewed as an NHL All-Star game, an NBA All-Star game. A few less goals, though. True. I'll grant you that one. But in the sense of penalties and jousting and that kind of material. Ball played back, you saw by Halliday. Well tracked down by Fryer. Halliday signed on a tryout back in 2013, was loaned out to a League Two side last year, Accrington Stanley. Joao with that burst, able to get back. Kitching had the win. And Joe Adding, well done. Here he is again. And that'll be Joao's throw. Fresh cut there by Joe Adding. Little tracks down that side. There's not only a lot of size on this back line of Middlesbrough, John, mm -hmm. but they also play even bigger than they are. Yes. The ability to get up and jump, we've seen that already from guys like McGee, McGoldrick, and McGoldrick is only 18 years old, and you see the size and presence that he has there in the middle of that back yeah. line. It's amazing. You mentioned Carlton earlier, the 16-year-old 
that's gonna play for Atlanta United. The age these days that these guys with the bigger, stronger, faster nutrition coaching, I don't remember seeing that growing up, 16 year olds no. playing in the EPL or nope. playing on such a level. We were young kids back then. And we saw it this past season in our league with Pulisic in goal, yes. who's heading over to Germany, who's in Germany. And his cousin, the other Pulisic, William, who's 17, I believe. Yep. So one week he's playing in goal in the NPSL in North Carolina. The next, instead of going to Duke, he's nice. part of a German side. Ball saved Good in. save. Very well done by Kitchen. Polas, oh, when he gets taken down. Maybe a warning here to Tinkler. Tell him it's your birthday, Robbie. Yeah, 19 is no longer 19. 19 just turned 20. Like the energy, I mentioned it before, of Pedro Polas tonight. Foul happened because of his quick first touch. Chapman lowering that shoulder. And that's not a good sign. Joa still down on the pitch. You see his head. You just see his arms yep. coming up. <laughs> Paula taking, come on. It's like, where's the call? Where's the call? He thumped me and he knocked me out of bounds here. Tough play from Chapman. Joa getting up a little slow. Looks to be all right. Once again, the lone goal coming the 18th. Brad Fuster, a header. Here's Chapman, now on this right side. Well done by Garcia. Mitch, very experienced back, and he gets taken down. Referee's gonna play it, oh! He plays advantage and then pulls it back. I have no idea, John. I think he played advantage, didn't think Anthony was gonna get the run of play, and he figured the best option was to call it back. That's when Anthony, and he's now giving a yellow. So let's see what happens here. There's Mitch, knocked from behind. He lets it play, and then Anthony, in the joust, you know what? gets you know three. What? You know what, he, he stopped on the whistle. I'll give the referee credit in the end. Was that McGoldrick? That's uh, McGoldrick. It looked live as if Takba really made that move and went, but McGoldrick stopped on the whistle, so that, that wasn't there. Great job by Rich Mill. Yes, very well done. ATP Productions doing a great job getting that replay. And hey, look who's there, the Silverback Monkey. <laughs> Banging that drum, good ball from Joa. Here's Pedro. What good, a good chip and control touch. there. Chapman with a world-class first touch and a good ball wide. Here Numbers. comes Middlesbrough again on the attack. Trouble coming through, and that goes wide. Silverback's back line making a meal out of that one. There's a lot of I got it, you take it. Let's look at the far. They had four on three here. Calling for it in the middle was Callum Cook. It went all the way through. McAloon had the opportunity and ended up going side netting. Injai and Resin has each had a chance, not able to do anything with it. Diwa, overlap coming from Tiago. Here comes Douglas. The Brazilian takes the shot from 20. Good shot from Tiago and well saved in the end by Fryer. Take another look at the launch. There's your overlap, pass all the way over, then you'll see him stop, re-enter, set up the right foot and fire. 
another half inch higher, and that's ticketed for that upper 90. Well done. Diwa and Tiago. Corner comes in, headed and just put over the bar by Sarge. Paco with a header, put it down, and Injai put it over. I think Sarge got caught in between bounces and it launched off his instep. Here's your entry. It was Takpa off the head, actually. Silverbacks had numbers and white kits more than red getting to the ball, and they took advantage of the height. They just couldn't end up putting it in the back of the net. And Anthony, obviously, with what I'm going to deem as an unlucky red card last week. It's good to see him on the pitch. Ball chipped in. Resendiz, Conti. Here's Poles. That's a great ball to Diwa. Oh, Douglas needed to turn the other way, didn't he? Went into traffic. Cook. Here's Callum. Gorky on Lancena. Goes through. Let's see what Callum brings to the table. And you've seen what McAloon brings to the table as an under-19 Northern Irish National, Northern Ireland National. Very active in the first 35 minutes here for Middlesbrough. Not a surprise, though. So when he was born, McAloon, was Pat Jennings playing? My guess is no. Well, let's see. McAloon's 20. The great keeper from Northern Ireland. I don't remember exactly what year he retired, but. He was around a while. Here's Lancena. You're going to have me do math again, aren't you? It's the skill that never goes away. <laughs> John Nelson in the, the math. Bill, Bill Nye is the science guy. We're going to start calling you the math guy. Nelly the math guy. What a good showing, though, by Northern Ireland and Ireland. No question. In the Euro Championships. And everyone was and concerned Wales. about the expansion of the field, and you saw what Iceland was able yes. to do. What Northern Ireland and Wales, Ooh. and that went right into the grill. Yes, Maloney just doesn't understand why he commits the foul, considering he kicked the ball. A little unlucky there for Lewis, I would say. But yeah, fresh blood when you see what Wales, Gareth Bale and Wales did in Ireland with Steve Guppy, the assistant coach, who was here last year as the assistant coach of the Silverbacks in the NASL. I will say this though, it makes for some, some bad last matches when teams are just parking that bus. Well, and you saw what Portugal was able to do in getting in on three points. It's incredible. Draw, yeah. draw, and draw. And to answer your question. All right, what do we have there? Pat Jennings. Last year, 1986. So 10 years difference. Really? 10 years difference. So Pat Jennings retired that long ago. I would not have said that. Okay. I guess it shows our age, doesn't it? Yeah, no, it shows your age. doesn't show mine. We don't need to go there, do we, Pops? No, we don't. No, no. Now, let's see. Your age, if these guys are 18, uh huh. can I call you granddad? You could, in theory, <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, this is this is the last time for us to really give each other the business. Oh, it's, hey, nothing wrong with giving each other the business. It's a 15-yard penalty. Yeah, underneath the pile. Greatest NFL call <laughs> in the history of mankind. <laughs> YouTube it or Google it if you uh -huh. don't know. Giving him the business. He's giving him the business. The New York Jets, Marty Lyons. The old sack exchange, Klecko and Lions and Gastineau. Not to get off the subject too much, but did I ever tell you the story when I no. saw Mark Gastineau? Nope. It's a great story as we see Mitch backtrack. Here's trouble. Middlesbrough Numbers. looking to go two up. They play it back. Conti, and it just goes over the bar. Chapman with the chip that time put too much under it, the 21-year-old. Let's take another look at it. Here's your transition. You see all those red kits coming yes. back. It's amazing how they're always back and always forward. Cheeky chip, Conte on it though. 
So I'm on a bus. Uh-huh. And Mark Gastineau lived right around my neighborhood, the great sacker of the Jets. Crazy guy. I mean, everybody knew he was crazy. He also tried his hand at boxing. You remember that? Mm-hmm. So Gastineau became a boxer. Comes on this bus. Why he's on the bus as we see them attacking again with McAloon. Plays it in. Comes on this bus, and I look up, and I say, Mark, how's the boxing going? At that moment, <laughs> I kid you not, he drops a penny on the floor. Look out. Nope, nothing called. They wanted that one, did Harry Chapman. I say, How, how's the boxing going? He drops a penny as we see this replay. And I'll Watch let you describe Buster this here. Post. It'll eventually end up 12 red. Give and go, beautiful touch there, ball first. Yeah, I, th I think ball first. Even though ball first doesn't necessarily mean you still can't have a foul, but that's a good nine call. Corner kick coming though here from Chapman. So I say, how's the boxing going? Literally at that second, Mark Gastineau drops a penny and Conte dives. Oh, here's numbers that they can go the other way and no. Well won though in the end. Good job by Halliday. And Gastineau looks up at me, he picks up the penny and he points his fingers, the flag goes up, and he goes, mark my word, I'm gonna be the heavyweight champion of the world soon. And I think to myself, keep picking up those pennies, Mark. I was gonna say, what did him drop? Was that supposed to be, hey, I'm picking up this penny of No, Mark no, no, Gaston no, an accident. He literally was just picking up his penny. Okay. It was like, he needed the penny, literally, but yet he thinks he was gonna be the champion of the world, and it obviously never happened. No, it definitely did not happen. Good and work again here. again on this left side. Here's Cook. Looks to play through. Oh, cheeky little move. Well done by Fuste, the goal scorer. And Lansana able to win it back. Diwa with some room. Numbers. You see the speed coming back by Tinkler. And again Bumped the foul by Robbie. Call the whistle. All right. You saw how quickly Middlesbrough ended up bringing five back, and it ended up being a three-on-three three to a three-on-five almost instantaneously. The box-to-box -box athleticism. We saw it with Michael Reed last year. The motor and the athleticism is Pedro T's one up. Minute number 41 we enter. Still 1-0 Middlesbrough FC under 23. Brad Fuster in the 18th. Long overlap and good speed. And Garcia fends off once again Chapman. Big cross coming, played in. Cook had his arm up wanting that one. Diwa. And Mitch getting closed down does a nice job. Plenty of room in the middle if he wants to go to Cook. McAloon. Too much. And those following along with the parent club today. Middlesbrough in their preseason work, a 2-2 draw. Goals by Negredo and Jordan Rose. Negredo, a big signing for them to help out offensively. Now obviously back in the Premier League. Cook. Johnny and Abraham, Polez. I thought it hit off Douglas's hand, but they call a high kick there on Maloney. Tiago had that screamer earlier that was saved by Fryer.
see how tough it's gonna be to try and penetrate this back line as they go forward to Joe Henning. And right at the edge of the box, Fryer gobbles it up. Kitching. Nice entry picked off. I'd say not a bad first half for Atlanta. No, because once again, you're looking at a squad who has a, a different motivation to play today. You're going up against a different type of opponent, different quality of opponent. And how do you adjust in a situation like this where you're playing a, a Premier League side? Different ball game entirely that you have to get used to. Certainly up in class today. And Atlanta's held their own. Not the better side, no doubt about that. One nil at the break's probably a fair score. They've had their opportunities, just haven't been able to capitalize. Tiago with a launch, the corner kick where Njai knocked it over the bar. So there have been opportunities for the Silverbacks here in the first 44. Good ball from Joa. Here's Resendiz up high. Plays it across, Takpa. Oh. Good idea by Tiago. Still in possession is the Brazilian. Little one, two, Brazilian to Brazilian. Here's Tiago again. Lansana can tee one up from there. Just a bit high from Abraham. Well done though, Tiago and Pedro Polez. As we enter minute number 45, we will see a lot of different a faces. A lot of changes. <laughs> a brand new side coming, they've scripted this for Middlesbrough FC. They'll keep their keeper and fryer in and McGoldrick as well. But they don't have an A side and a B side. They're pretty much even sides according to the coaching Interchangeable parts team. and yes. you gotta have that, especially at that high level. Flag goes up. And See if Tiago Middlesbrough tries to play this quick as they have for most of the first half. Tiago wondering why the whistle was given. And once again, Middlesbrough just coming up quick. We'll have highlights at the half. I believe we'll have Paul Crazier, one of the assistants here with Middlesbrough, hopefully will come on up with us. He's the under 11 and under 12 head coach for the academy. Cook. As we reach at a time and there is none an given. So one nil Middlesbrough FC at the half and John Thoughts, we said Atlanta played well, I guess, considering. Yeah. I think Middlesbrough also, they played in control. Yep. I think second half, they're gonna wanna once again put that pedal down. And once again, we've seen what makes this squad the quality offensive powerhouse that it has been in their first two preseason matches. You can't emphasize enough that you put up 13 goals in your first two matches. Things are humming for you offensively and you've got a lot of different options. We've seen different options with Middlesbrough in the first 45. We've seen what Tom McAloon can do as a Northern Ireland under 19. We've seen the homegrown academies. We've seen what these players can do that come up through the system and they're right there now with this team going into Premier League two. And the Silverbacks have held their own. They've had their opportunities. They've been able to counter punch on occasion, but once again, if you're looking at today as a preseason friendly and a postseason friendly and a way to expose yourself, Middlesbrough has the one goal on the board. And right now, you are looking at it in that frame of mind. Burrow's up 1-0. And it is 1-0 at the half. Brad Fuster in the 18th. We'll see Morelli. We'll see Yakupovich, some decorated young men. We'll see many other new faces as well. 1-0, Middlesbrough at the break. We'll have an interview coming up with Paul Crazier right here on AtlantaSilverbacksFC.com.
And welcome back here at the park. 1-0 Middlesbrough FC under 23 in front ahead thanks to a Brad Fuster goal. Here with the under 11, under 12 coach for Middlesbrough, Paul Crazier. And Paul, let me hear your thoughts first on this first half. Uh, I think it was really, co really competitive. Uh, both teams uh, working hard. Obviously a pre-season game for ourselves, so we're just getting back into the, the groove of things. We've controlled a lot of the possession. Uh, we'd probably be disappointed not to go in maybe Maybe one more goal in front, probably had a, a good shout for a penalty, but overall I think we've, we've kept possession well. Just in that final third, I think we, we could do a little bit better with that final bit of quality in the final third. But the Silverbacks have worked hard, they've dug in, defended well, and they've had a couple of chances of their own as well. So overall I think it's been an enjoyable half for, for ourselves and, uh, and all the people that have come out to watch. Now we've seen 13 goals put on the board already by you guys. Yeah. The majority of them have been in the second half. Yeah. We're going to see a new unit for the most part coming in. Has this been the strategy in those first two matches as well? Uh, I think so. I think throughout pre the first couple of pre-season games, uh, usually though, those games we've got a big squad, so we need to, need to really utilize the squad and make sure our boys are getting the minutes in the, in the first two or three pre-season games. Then as we get towards the first game of the season, then really narrowing it down to those those boys that are going to start, those 11 that are going to start the, the first game. But the boys who are coming on second half, I'm sure they'll watch the first half, seeing what the things they need to do and uh, the good parts that we've done and maybe just improving that, as I said, that little final third bit. Now, you're the coach of the under 11, under 12. Talk about the experience that's been for you and how you groom these young men to try and get up to this level. Yeah, um, I've just been thinking there as I was coming over it, there's especially the second half that the boys have come on. I think there's five or six of those boys that I had when they were really? they were under nine, under ten. So they've had the progression through from being at the club since they were eight year old, and then now they're, they're one step away from the first team. So that's my role when they come in to lay those foundations, and and then hopefully the majority of them, like you say, there's there's probably I would say 30, 40 percent of them still here now in the under 23 level, which which is great for me, great for the club, and. First and foremost, great for the for the players that are that are putting on the shirt for, for Middlesbrough Football Club. That's the goal, right? Yeah. To groom these guys and eventually bring them up to your yeah, program. And, and, and that's my that's my job as well as the other coaches in our academy that work alongside me and uh, the, the other league coaches, the, the nine and ten league coach, thirteen and fourteen league coach, fifteen, sixteen league coach. We've got to give them the platform to to, to carry on and hopefully get on the under eighteen team and get full time, get into the the twenty one team and then. Hopefully, with our track record and producing young players, that they, they, they go on to, to play in our first team. And, and now, back in the Premier League, we hope to see some of them on telly and uh, and playing in the Premier League in the, in the near future. Now, they rebranded this whole league. Pre Premier League 2, and you guys are in Division 2. Yeah. What is the feeling from you guys, from, from Paul, from you, the rebranding, the making of the under-23 from the under-21? Is this a positive step forward? I think so. I, I think... In England, there's probably uh, it's up in the air whether the under 21 league was was really positive or not. Or we try the try in this year, it's 23, so that gives a, a players a little bit more chance to carry on when they when they go past 21. Those players that are not in the first team, uh, getting the first team, it still gives them the opportunity. So I think it's probably still up in the air. But as a, as a club that we are, we, we we go with anything that we can, and we're look our first and foremost. And second half action, the Silverbacks in white will get wholesale changes for you. John Nelson, Justin Hanover. That's the word to use, wholesale yes. changes. Little power failure as we were talking to the coach there and Paul Crazier. So we apologize for a couple of minutes of being lost, but well done. Thank you to Paul. And John's furiously That's writing on that. Use. You ain't kidding. So we have all of the Silverbacks are still in. Right. They kept everybody in. We'll see wholesale changes. We'll see Bryce, I'm sure, soon. Right. But Atlanta stays the same. And there should be only two that are the same for Middlesbrough. The keeper and Joe Fryer. Right, one. And the center back in Niall McGoldrick. Red 17, yes. So everybody else will see Callum Johnson in the back. Here's Joa taking it on that strong left foot. Oh, and the arms were extended and nothing called. 
Joa becoming a punching ball this afternoon. All right. I think we got it. All right. So you want to know him? Preach. All right. Here we go. Fryer and goal one. That has not changed. It is still a 4 3 3 or a 4 2 3 1, depending on how you look at it. At the back, it is now Hayden Colson, 20. It is Matty Elsden, 14. It is McGoldrick, 17. It is Callum Johnson, number two. Midfield, still three there. Number four, Joe Wheatley, number nine, Alex Pattison, number two, Marcus Tavernier. And up front, and these are going to be good stories when we talk about Arnel Jakopovich. Jakopovich wearing 23. You have Jao Morelli Neto, who will be wearing eight. And then you have Junior Mundal, number five. That's your red kits for the second 45 for now. Not much relief. Certainly a very talented side that just came on the pitch. And a couple of the guys that are not homegrown. We mentioned it earlier. Zhao from Brazil. Arnell from Austria. Just played on the under-19 European Championships. I think he came in yesterday, they said, or <laughs> today, or not off the presses. Paco goes long. Morelli. There's Wheatley, number four. Joe with a free kick goal in that last match. Garcia trying to keep him wide. Well done by Mitch and Alex Pattison. His shot goes wide. Pattison in his first year with the club as an 18-year-old. Scored a goal with the first team, I believe, last week against Lancaster. Close. Doncaster. Doncaster. Doncaster Rovers. Just my bad handwriting is we see Amit exiting. Well done by and Here comes Conte. Bryce. Here comes Bryce, who's done a remarkable job this year. Round of applause from the fans here for Amit. I would say that's why Coach Silva did that. Very classy move. Yes. It's like giving a senior a, a sign-off, letting him go until the end, and then having his own applause as he exits. Indeed. Bryce played on the NASL Silverbacks last year. No minutes. Did sit on the bench a couple of times. Behind Stuart Seuss and C.J. Cochran. Oh, that's a good ball forward. Oh, and here comes Joa. And Tiago in a handball and a penalty being called. Oh, this is interesting. Callum Johnson politicking saying no. Referee saying yes. Eighth year with the Burroughs, scouted as an eight-year-old. Coach Jenkins loves his engine. Non-stop, great passer, great retention of the ball, but got caught in all that pinball in the box. And you see the result here, and it looks like, is it wow. Taco or Pedro? Well, Anthony's putting it down. Interesting. So Anthony, who scored the lone goal in the friendly against Nigeria last week on a brilliant goal. Looking to do the same to this point here in minute number 50. Fryer, Takpa. And Anthony Takpa levels it at one. Well done by Atlanta. A little combination of Atlanta going forward well and Middlesbrough butchering a little couple of plays back there. Takpa knew what he was going to do from the absolute beginning, planted and put it in the low near corner as Fryer went the other way. And we're tied at ones as we hit the 51st. And it looks like another substitution. And that might have been why Takpa took the PK because we have a substitution here. Avery Shepard. So on the team. 41 out, 19 in in the 51st. Avery probably leading the squad in goals per minute. Has three in fairly limited action overall. Came out of Southern Polytech and Clayton State. Did a great job this year. Tiago running back hard on Johnson. Here's Callum in the corner. 
Gets doubled. Diwa. Little pep in the step for the Silverbacks. That'll win a throw, I think, for Douglas. The plan was, partner, yes. to get a lot of Silverbacks in as well. Mm -hmm. We're 1-1, one, one, minute number 52. What do you do now? Are you thinking Coach Silva maybe Might be going for the Duke. those plans? Might be going for the Duke here. First teamers maybe a little bit more than planned. But really starting this one. They play right to left. Good ball forward by Tavernier. Here comes Sarge. And I believe Fabio kick. Fernandez. And Mamadou Jallo. Now the LASIK has been giving me trouble. But I believe that's who we'll see in a matter of moments. It is unlimited substitutions, by the way, in this friendly. Here's Shepard. Poles, Avery. Good hip check by Lansana. They're saying play on. Yes, advantage played. And, and finally a foul is called. Resend is on that one. Joseph Wheatley was up there. Got the hip check from Lansana, the 19-year-old. Primarily more known for his defense as a center mid. Wheatley very good at these set pieces. Maybe a little far out. 37, 38 yards out, I would say. He did score from that 20-yard free kick against Whitby. Serves it in. Good ball. And just headed wide in the end by McGoldrick. You saw McGoldrick get up first, even though there were two white kits in front of him. All right, so here's Dewa leaving. And Joa. And Fernandez. And that is Mamadou. Douglas looked very good today. Mm -hmm. And wasting no time. Looks like there's going to be another couple of Silverback subs. We'll see Big Georgie coming on in. Flag goes up. See if Kulav goes in the midfield. Went in there in Miami last week, was training a bit in the midfield. Played in the back for the bulk of this season. Now he's transitioning going forward a bit. I think it was the haircut. As he called it, fresh. And when Georgie says something's fresh, that's right. Good ball to feet. Well done. 1-1 one, one here at the park. Minute number 56. Fuster in the 18th. Anthony Takpa with a penalty in the 50th. Here's Patterson. Fernandez, that'll be a corner. And here's your next go around. Are they going to let him come in yet? Are they going to wait for the corner? Well, if you're Atlanta, you probably want Big Georgie in 
Well, they're going to take Paco out, it looks like, though. Okay, so Paco for Georgie. And I believe that's RJ. RJ Banton. Yep. From England. Hasn't played yet this season. Works as hard as anybody, though, in training. Let's see if they wait for RJ. No, they're going to bring him in for Johnny. I thought maybe they'd wait after the corner because he's not the tallest, but Johnny's not either. Good to see RJ in there. He's worked very hard. Midday hot training sessions, and he's out there grinding away. Wanting that handball, nothing called. Here's Patterson. Injai defending, played back. Johnson. Ball played in. Billington able to get it. Thought about the quick outlet, but held on to it. After the match, by the way, there will be a trophy presentation. The Silverbacks will hoist the South Atlantic Cup. And then we'll have some highlights. We'll have some interviews up here, possibly both sides. We'll get some Silverbacks, and we may even get some Middlesbrough FC players. Tiago trying to track it down. He does. Right-footed cross. Jallo, who played third division Portugal. Colson plays it forward. It looked like that got deflected to land on that straight line to the front of the box. And all the way back. The captain, Mitch Garcia, the rock. Once again, congratulations to Mitch. He's getting married in two weeks. John Nelson, Justin Hanover. My partner will get a Chattanooga score soon as Chattanooga plays in three days against this Middlesbrough team. It's, it's sort of harmonious. Yes. You, you like how life is a circle. Silverbacks play Miami. Uh-huh. The next week, Miami plays Chattanooga, who's Correct. then playing Middlesbrough. Yes. I feel like I'm playing the Kevin Bacon game with you. Yes. I think that's Ali about ready to come in. Ali Janadala. There you go. Well done by Tiago. Very Tiago. good effort from Tiago. Tiago's played professionally before, played in Brazil. He's played in a couple of countries. Really looked good today. Tough ball over the top. Here's trouble. Can they save it in? They do, and Billington able to snuff it out. Jakopovic able to get that left foot and keep it in there. Okay, your start times for everything else in PSL as we're here in minute 60. South oh, we Region started at five. I forgot. Uh, uh huh. <laughs> South Regional Final Miami United at Chattanooga FC. That's at Fort Finley at 7 30. West Region Final Sonoma County at Albion SC. That's down towards San Diego. That's at Mission Bay. That'll be 7 o'clock local time, 10 o'clock Eastern. So that's tomorrow, basically, for us. And Northeast Region Final. New Jersey, Copa, and Clarkstown. Good turn by Ali. And Heads McGoldrick, by McGoldrick to head it away. Yeah. It and your Midwest Region Final is at 7.30 at Houseman Field in Grand Rapids with the Royals of AFC Cleveland taking on GRFC. I totally forgot we started at 5. I thought you were going to give me a second-half score. No, we started at 5. Well, right. Big boys move up. Georgie's in the box. Sarge is in. And a lot of red kits are in as well. Finally cleared away by Tavernier. The second-year apprentice is Marcus. And headed in by Ali, and that goes wide. Older brother James playing with Rangers FC. Tavernier, only 17. It's incredible. 
Not to beat a dead horse, but I was a decent player growing up. I don't even know if I had hair under my arms at 17. It's, it's I'm a different. Let, I'm going to let that statement walk. It's a different level. Lancena trying to be shut down by Patterson. We mentioned earlier, thanks to FD and Alvin Glay, the coach, Hassanir Silva. It's over in Kuwait, I believe, for years. And here comes RJ on a long ball. Coach Silva came in, not a lot of resources given the situation, and that's a foul one. And Coach Silva's done a remarkable job blending this team together. Good overlap by RJ. And a yellow given to Elsden. That's the second yellow already to Middlesbrough and none given to the Silverbacks. Kulov plays to feet. Oh, and here's onside on his own half was Yakupovic. The card given there to Matthew Elsden. Ex-SAF ex Seer, England under 17 side, the 19-year-old center back with the first card of the match. No, second. Second. We had one earlier. That one. Yeah, Middlesbrough had one earlier as well. Okay. You certainly don't want to see no. anybody on 10 men in this match. That's no, That's no. going to do nobody justice. No. Long ball to Ali. A lot of red kits coming forward. Some numbers now. Morelli plays it wide. Patterson, Injai defending. Alex back to Wheatley. Clever ball chipped in and there's the rock. Ooh, tough ball on Pedro with a good first touch. Fernandez. Fabio's put in some good minutes. Not a ton of them this year, but when he's come in, good things have happened. Mm -hmm. Some comeback victories. Good stuff from Zhao. Jakubovic taken down by Sarge. The story on Jao Morelli Neto. The connections that were had when you were a player, they come back when you're a coach, came from Juninho's Ituano FC side down in Brazil a couple years ago. Juninho was at Atletico. Offsides call there on Avery. The manager for Middlesbrough, Ator Karanka, was a defender at Real, and they were both mutual friends with Roberto Carlos. So, Jean Morelli was at Ituano. He comes up, and now he's part of the pipeline that has Brazilian players making their way to play in, in uh, Great Britain. Connections can go a long way. Good possession here from Atlanta. Georgie goes the other side. Good chip. And a goal kick. RJ Banton jousting over there. He couldn't quite get the handle on it long enough to turn in, which is what it looked like he wanted to do there.
Georgie looking forward for Avery, who's coming back on that one. I spoke to RJ maybe about six weeks ago mm -hmm. because he, he wasn't getting a lot of time, and I said, did you expect to get a lot of time? And he said, well, the stigma, basically, by people from England is that, yeah, the U.S. soccer is just not, not that great. And he said it's basically a misnomer, and he knows it now. He came here, and there are a lot of really good players. And so he completely understood, and that's played in. Georgie knocks it out. But England does have that scoffing down a little bit at Americans at times. I guess for good reason years ago at least. There's a high boot there to knock it out of bounds. Banton looking for somebody to throw it into. Anybody. Fernandez. I think that was a collision of cleats there. Well won by Kulov. A lot of room, big switch. Here comes, no. Just out of the reach of Zhao. Then Sana. Kulov is playing in the back. Silverback's looking to make another swap out pretty quickly. I believe that's Gabriel Obatola. Good work rate for Mitch. Well done by the captain. Middle of the pile, good work. A lot of the Silverbacks pass is just out of the range of the reach of the leg and you see a yeah. lot of lunging to try to maintain possession the field today the surface is tough yes you had enough rain to make it tricky not easy to control here's your blocked see the transition wheatley no lansano with a good play polez plays to shepherd's feet saved in by mamadou Problem with that turnaround with Avery is he's trying to do it with his right foot, and when you're turning to your left, trying to throw to your right, your kick to your right, you're going to get that outbound action. Slow the whole thing down. RJ working one on one, gets to the left foot. Polez from distance gets blocked. Mamadou a bit overzealous. Good work right here from the boys in white. Mm -hmm. Minute number 70, still tied at one. Brad Fuster in the 18th, and Anthony Takpo with a penalty converted in the 50th. Well done, Pedro Polaz, a hard fought 70 minutes. So OJ does officially come in. I assume he'll go up front with Shepard. Good first touch by Johnson. To Vernier. Mundal. And for those keeping track, the only players still in for the Silverbacks here in the 71st minute from the first half are Mitch, the Sarge, and Lansana. So a good job of really getting guys in. And Atlanta, a very deep team as well. You're yes. not losing a ton. You're not losing a ton. We've chronicled it throughout the year. Tons of interchangeable parts. As Atlanta's going to As I spoke too soon. Let's see what the swap is here. I believe, believe we'll see 
Gerberi Karuna. For Mitch. And well done. Good round of applause for the captain. Just Mitch being Mitch today. So I say that only three players uh, hadn't been swapped out. We instantly get a swap out. It's all right. He's doing some more math. Good work from Georgie. Fabio with a clever touch. Forward to Avery. RJ with a low cross. Substitution for your Silverbacks entering the match number 33, Gerberi Karumba. McGoldrick looks like he's going to go in 90 along with Fryer. Tavernier. Red shirts going forward. Just out of the reach of Zhao. Three white shirts forward, about five reds back. Make it six. Yeah. The transition, the way they get back and forward is, you just see the difference in the class and the pace. And Sana being pressured by Tavernier. High pressure coming from Mid Middlesbrough. And there's obviously a foul on Colson. Silverbacks all year long. Special thanks to Capelli Sports, the official apparel supplier for the 2016 Atlanta Silverbacks. Youth clubs around as well. And Best Buy Soccer. I bought my kits there. Right around the stadium here and as you like to say, a stone's throw away. About a par five, a little longer. Probably a par five and a par three away. They just give another another card? Uh-huh. To Hayden Colson. So I deem that if this match finishes level, yes. whoever has less cards wins. Is that a fair tiebreaker? Yeah, level. It's level's level. Level's level? You don't want to play with me? You don't nah. want to? Okay. We have company here. You don't want the people in England to say those dumb Americans? We have company. We have a respected opponent. Indeed. Replayed that for not going out of the box. Here's Johnson. And remember for Middlesbrough, this is the first match. It's three matches in a 10-day span. After the match here, they go to Chattanooga to play Chattanooga FC midweek up at Fort Finley, a big crowd expected there. And then they go up to Tri-Cities. Yeah, seriously, they'll get 15,000 or something for this. And uh, they'll go up to Tri-Cities to take on the uh, Tri-Cities Otters, Bristol Kingsport, Johnson City. So three matches in 10 days for these guys before they head back home. Nice crowd here tonight. Some fans came. It probably won't be nearly as much as Fort Finley. And I Here's think that Bryce. a lot of folks were probably warded off because of the weather. Ali tries to clear it, but some trouble as they attack on this right side. Looking to take the lead, and look at Bryce come out and make the big save. Joe Wheatley gets stoned. But that high pressure that we've talked about, they retain possession very quickly. Silverbacks don't have a chance to breathe here in the 76th. Pattinson plays it wide. Johnson. And our favorite Yellow Jackets back, John. I know. Good ball through. Pattinson puts it across, and Billington's just <laughs> able to gobble oh, wow. it up. Unlucky for Middlesbrough on that exchange. Played for the cross. He'll That's a great a ball through. Great ball in. Watch the cross. 
Bryce goes down for it, but the bodies and the feet create enough of a delay where Bryce can jump back and jump on it. And a good job from Banton able to come back and cause enough of a problem. Addison with a great cross in to start that whole thing. Activity at the back post, which is what Middlesbrough has been able to get today. A lot of activity on back post action. Foul called as Lansano is chopped a little bit. Here's Obatola, former Portland Timber. Janadala. Good win by Georgie, and he's going to turn with some speed. Fernandez, Georgie continues his run. Fabio from distance. Deflected by Tavernier, and Fryer able to get it. Johnson on the right side. Callum again. Atlanta sinks in a little bit. McGoldrick tries to go the other way. Well done by Mamadou. Here's Fernandez, who refs my games on Wednesday nights. Good cross to Ali, working one-on-one. -on -one. Janadala, OJ. A little too wound up in his shot. And he's putting his head to the sky thinking, I should have done better. <laughs> Poked away from Ali. Here comes trouble. Patterson with numbers. And Georgie. Georgie doing a good job. He's going to get a yellow. Yep. Well-deserved yellow. And Georgie had his arm wrapped around it's a to great prevent foul. any kind of forward motion there. It's a foul you have to take in the 79th minute from Pro that position. Professional foul. Yes. We'll see Wheatley once again on the ball, as is Tavernier. Silverbacks just behind the 18, right about 17 yards out of Billington. Wheatley lays it up, headed out. Volley chance, put over the bar. Mundal. Mondal, standing member of the Great Britain under 17s, and we mentioned academies and coming in early, being a part of the process early. Mondal started at the age of 11 in the Middlesbrough Academy. So he was a late bloomer, relatively speaking. As opposed to someone like Callum Cook, who got in at eight. Long kick from Billington. And well defended in the end by Colson. It's sort of like Abraham Lansena. Abraham started playing professionally basically at age eight. Oh, here's trouble. This is trouble. Zhao. Abraham Lansena was taken out of his district, brought far away to play with a professional team, went to school there as well at age eight, and started playing at age 10 some minutes in professional leagues. That was just a gift right there, and you watch Zhao outside of the right foot. He's got to do better. In instead of it being the, the right on shot that he wanted, it ended up being a slice. Atlanta dodged a bullet on that one. Here's Junior on that left side. And Atlanta it, throw again. It was interesting to see Elsden there defending Avery, and you saw Elsden with the right arm up and under to keep Avery from getting the height that he's used to getting on these entries. Very impressed from R.J. Banton. He's getting some run and making the most of it. Good ball from Obatola. Ferbery 
Ali. Ali is going to take a crack at it. Looks for Fabio. Ali had that look in his eye. I thought he was mm -hmm. going to tee one up from about 25. Yep. Making a big work with the, the right foot to the far corner. Ended up passing it. Fabio couldn't hit it flush. Here's Patterson who's really done well in the middle controlling things. Player down for Middlesbrough, not a good sign. That is Patterson. Yep. <laughs> Ali just tries to nail a fan and realizes that wasn't the smart thing to do. Patterson rubbing that right knee of his. It's probably a good time to tell you Urgent care of Peachtree. Open seven nights a week. No appointment necessary. Urgent care of Peachtree. The only urgent care open nightly till 1030. Mr. Patterson, they're not leaving till Monday. Maybe he'll visit them later. Five o'clock match. He can get in before 1030. Deflected. Stayed in. And wholesale changes, it looks like, for the Silverbacks now. We'll get some youth in here. Yep. Aaron Middendorf, a 16-year-old from Holland, has been training with Atlanta, scored a couple of impressive goals the other day in the training session. We'll see him. We'll see Alceni Keita, who is the twin brother of Keita over in Jacksonville, plays second division France. And Denzel Clark, I believe, came in as well. Denzel banged up in the beginning of the season. And you hear the applause from the family of Middendorf. Substitutions for your Silverbacks and train the match number 35, Aaron Middendorf. And number 34, Alcini Keita. What a good experience for a 16-year-old coming over to train with this organization. And now we'll get some run against the quality. Oh, good and that's ball. trouble. Looking for the lead, and they get it. Jakopovic able to put it in with that left foot. The whole middle of the field exposed, John. Yep. You see the great entry right there. The two defenders collapse on the ball, set up easily for Jakubovic in that left foot. Patterson could have had a crack at it with his right. He leaves it off, Jakubovic. And Atlanta just fell asleep in the middle of the pitch. Too easy on that exchange. So it's 2-1 Middlesbrough, Fuster and Jakopovic. Takpa for Atlanta in the 50th with a penalty. Let's see how the Silverbacks attack this in the last five minutes of regulation. We didn't have any kind of extra time in the first 45. I wouldn't anticipate any kind of extra time here in the second. Backtracked well by Fernandez. Good poke away by Fabio. Problem is, you would say, of course, you've got to go attack. Who cares if you lose 3-1? But Atlanta's got a unit in, and what a good ball forward. Excellent ball. The chance and sent wide by Denzel. Good opportunity, great ball through. Just not able to convert in the end. Here's another look at it. Great work up the side off the outside of the foot. The difficult control there, and Denzel tried to work it to the far post, but the angle got cut down by Fryer that time. Not a whole lot of space to move it. Ended up going wide, no B. Furbury with that brilliant ball. 
But my point was you obviously will go forward in this situation. Who cares if you lose by another? But Atlanta right now is a unit that just isn't used to playing together all that much. Right. And they're going to call touch. that again. See, that's not, again, that's not a pass. And Bryce is saying that. Georgie just tried to control it, and, and Bryce took it from him. So, spot kick. I'd like to see that again. If we can run that again, obviously you can't, John, pass it back to your keeper. I, I don't think Georgie passed it back. I think he turned and tried to trap it. Turned and trap and control is what you're looking right, at. So, let's There's see. Is there a distinct... No, there's no pass there. Come on. And especially in a friendly, really. So let's see what happens here. Bryce did the right thing. I have no issues at all with that. Jakupovic over it. Obviously an indirect kick. There isn't a whole lot of space to do something with here, so I wouldn't anticipate anything direct unless he's going to get cheeky and chip or launch it into the wall for a rebound. Shot put up and over. You're right, just not a lot of room for Pedersen. It's almost better if you're sort of right outside the 18. A la the Mitch Garcia kick on the other side a couple of weeks ago. The Rock dialing eight from long distance. Good touch to Vernier. Good cross. Colson out wide. Run coming there from Mundell. Can Atlanta break out? Good idea looking for Middledorf. Not able to connect. Here's Aaron. A lot of red jerseys. Jallo with an overlap from RJ. Jallo with a shot. Not too troubling. Easy collapse and grab by Fryer there. Launching it deep, probably with a minute and a half to go. Probably sticking to the 45 minute clock. He's had a lot of substitutions. I think he's got to give a minute. You're going to say he's going to blow it at 90? That'd be my guess. 11 substitutions. That's why I think they'll probably. For the Silverbacks in the second 45 minutes. I think they'll give a minute or two. One goal a game, why not? We'll see. Georgie on that foul. And on a yellow. They play it quickly again. Mundal, cross, trouble. Jakubovic not able to get his brace. Final moments of the 2016 season here for the Atlanta Silverbacks. And again, they will have the trophy presentation for winning the South Atlantic in the NPSL. And you said that's a big trophy, eh? Oh, it's a big trophy. It's not the Stanley Cup, but it's a big trophy. Approaching at a time. 10 more seconds. 2-1 Middlesbrough in the lead. Going forward with some speed now. Here's Denzel. Oh, well won in the end by Johnson. Good work in traffic there. If Callum doesn't get that, Denzel's one-on-one -on -one with Fryer. Keita well in. Obatola. Trying to go through. Flag down. Here comes Middendorf. Plays it across. Corner. Oh, dangerously close, John, to a little OG. 
Well worked, Obatola and Middendorf. McGoldrick there to cut it off, ends up going side netting, a very dangerous play. Ends up just being a corner instead of an equalizer. And maybe a final opportunity here for Atlanta. Obatola with that left foot. Let's see who's in, Sarge, Georgie. Atlanta needs to commit to the box here. And a word. About the argy bargy, keep it to a minimum. And here we go. Low line drive, Fernandez. The referee peeks at his clock. Two one Middlesbrough on top. Fuster, Jakopovic, Takpa for Atlanta. He again glances at that watch. Whistle in the mouth. There and it is. that'll do it. Well, the Atlanta Silverbacks may have fallen 2 1, John, but quite an effort in the end. Once again, this was from the beginning. We had said that this was going to be a day where you can take advantage of an opportunity. You invite folks over and very, very balanced, disciplined, high octane, under 23 side in Burrow coming here. And it's been a good couple of days where you get to make new friends, you get to teach a lot of other folks about how you play the sport, information shared, information gained. And also you get to show yourself off as a talent. Burrow showing themselves off to an entirely different country, the same way for the Silverbacks players. This gives them an opportunity to be seen to an entirely different group of soccer eyes. And hopefully from there, some of those soccer eyes might grant these guys another opportunity. And look, you throw them in an environment they're not used to. Right. You know, Middlesbrough came to the States here. Yep. Certainly they're the more talented team, but they're not used to this pitch. They don't know necessarily Atlanta. They're now going on a bus on Monday to Chattanooga, yep. then another trip. Give them a little adversity. Put them in a situation where they don't know, they, they're not familiar with. Yep, and that's what you want for athletes as they grow and as they go forward. It's like, how do you handle adversity? And when the coaching staff tells us it's a 19-hour day <laughs> to get over to this part of the world, to get over here to the colonies, then, you know, what do you do with it? First Next match step. of three in a 10-day time. You really showed yourself off as a deep squad. Going forward, it'll be interesting. You know, coming up midweek, they'll be in Chattanooga after another day or so here. And that place is going to be loud. Fort Finley will be a very receptive crowd. It'll be another interesting test for these guys. But for the Silverbacks in general, fantastic season, great way to start. Somewhat circular, great way to finish. And you see how things have gone here. Yes, you lose tonight 2-1 to a, a Premier League 2 side. But Basically a reserve team Yeah, it is for, for a Premier League team. Yeah, they, pra they practice one field over yes. from the folks that you're going to be seeing on the Premier League weekends. And some of these guys will be there at some point. You see the Silverbacks in the white getting ready to accept that South Atlantic trophy. In a matter of moments. Take, take a look at the replays here. Takpa. Take a look at what's going on. Takpa with the equalizer in the 50th, down one nothing at the half, and then he was removed shortly thereafter. Good work for Takpa going 50 minutes, and you see the opportunities. A lot of long distance passing. Two here. balls. Great Two entry. balls, 70 yards, John. And then the flip over, Jakopovic, easy left foot. That made it 2-1 in the 85th, and that was your game winner. Just one breakdown. It wasn't the usual unit. It was two balls through the middle, too easy. That's all it takes. It's all it takes. When you have that kind of a situation, you have one breakdown in an unfamiliar seven-person back. That's what will end up happening more often than not. And that's what went down in this case.
And remember, the goal of this team, we've spoken ad nauseum to Fode. It's not a secret, is to try and get guys to be able to earn professional contracts. The Mitch Garcias, yep. the Pedro Polezes, the Joe, Joe Joanning, Abraham Lansana, Douglas Diwa, Georgie Kulov, the, the main guys. Hopefully, we're all rooting for them. They've, they've really done a nice job throughout the season. Now they've got to get these tryouts, John, and now they've got to really impress at whatever level. In this country, in another country, it's time for a lot of these guys to earn that professional contract because they deserve it. To your point, guys like Ali Janadala, who came back and are getting reps here. Keita, working Division Two in France. Middendorf at 16, coming over from Holland. You obviously have eyes on him going forward as he gains more experience in the work. And you've also seen guys who are getting reps and should be getting more reps for their national squads going forward. So they're always kept in the national team conscious, consciousness of their respective times. So there's a lot of moving parts to a season like this. There's a lot of moving parts to a team like this. And to have them come together the way that they did to make the run that they were able to make and flash the ability that they did on a bunch of different levels, whether it's straight out offense, coming back from adversity, depth on the roster, stepping in when you needed to. That was just what you ended up with, and it was a, a great mix to see everything come together for the Silverbacks this year. As they get ready to accept that South Atlantic trophy, a couple of congratulations. Also, we did not see tonight some key cogs throughout the year. Adnan Bangura, yep. Sean Greenfield, guys that started for a couple of matches. Just a test to the depth that you just mentioned about with this team. Those guys could have come in and they could have been the starting 11. Mm -hmm. And that's the, you know, when you assemble a roster for a season, that's a sprint. Let's not oh, yeah. hide anything here. Games in other regions are 12, 14, that's 16 still a sprint. games. Right. Here in this particular region, it is a 10 game run and yes. you've got to be ready from go if you're going to make a run. And we've seen other squads in the Northeast lose a game out of 14, get a game and a draw. You have other teams who run the table, go undefeated, although there'll be a draw in there sooner or later. So the approaches are different, but the thing is with the NPSL, it's still a very mash the gas approach that you have to have, and you've got to be ready from game one if you're going to be making it to that third season. And this is a team that none of them really play together for the most part. Yep. Other teams, the Myrtle Beaches of the world, other programs had maybe eight, nine, ten guys that have been there. Yep, Chattanooga FC is another example. Right, exactly. So you see Coach Silva there in your screen in the dark shirt. The job he did, mold, did molding these guys together. The talent was there. We yep. chronicle that all year. Just a matter of putting it together. There's Coach Anthony Topka, the father of the goal scorer, former goalkeeper of Liberia. ZZ Roberts, who's done a great job as well as an assistant coach, former AC Milan, former Colorado Rapid star. And this, this franchise will be back. Not sure exactly who. But I but, believe but we'll see the But turnover at this again. level is to be expected. Absolutely it is. And it's how you adjust and how you go forward when it comes to these kinds of situations in a league like this that is, you know, roster transitory, for lack of a better word. You know, a bunch of guys swapping and swapping out. And the franchises that have stability are the ones that will continue to be making those deep runs into the playoffs and making those appearances, semifinals, finals, and so on. There's Fode Dalla and Alvin Glay up top in the dark shirts. There's Alvin, done a remarkable job. Both of those guys really sweeping the floors as well. And Mitch did the laundry, Mitch, correct? I, you know, I wanted to say that they did the laundry, but I couldn't say it because Mitch was doing it. Uh -huh. The captain doing the laundry, remarkable. So you see them putting on the dark shirts as we wait for that trophy presentation. Crowd on the field, all the fans. You see the final if you're just joining us. 2-1, Middlesbrough, Brad Fuster in the 18th. Anthony Takpo with that penalty in the 50th. 
And the winner from Arnel Yakupovic in minute number 84. And with Middlesbrough coming into the Premier League, and you see this, the under 23 bunch that is making the tour of, of uh, the Southeast United States. First year in the Premier League, they're making a lot of noise with a lot of roster pickups, but at the same time, the way that it's done is through academy and development and having the younger players work their way through the system. And there are a boatload of guys in this under 23 side that have been there since they were in elementary school. Right middle school and have been a part of this process so it'll be interesting to see how burrow does in the premier league and how they do over time with all of the development all these different players but their homegrown talent and that's big well I, I asked and i think we we lost power at the time with coach paul crazier i said well basically why can't you be the next leicester city nobody thought leicester could be leicester you're going to tell me middlesbrough their senior team i'm talking now yes can't d I mean nobody should be able to do what Lester did but now the seal's been cracked yes the 5,000 to 1 or whatever long shots has done right. it so all of a sudden it's that fresh approach for all these teams like Middlesbrough who just rose up and the Premier League. you have that particular situation and when you have where Middlesbrough is concerned you have today the 2-2 two -two draw you had Rhodes and you had uh, who was it that scored the other goal Negredo Negredo scored the other goal for the two goals, and they're going to need that offense. But getting a guy like Victor Valdez yeah. and have him, and they're also talking with uh, Brad Guzan, who would be coming over on a free. So you'd Hello. have that experienced Hello. depth. And let's looks like a trophy presentation. Alvin Glay on the mic. So thank you, you guys, for a successful 2016 NPSL season. Why don't you give a hand to Atlanta Silverbacks? This year, this year has been challenging. First thing you heard, your Silverbacks were taken away from you. But then we that not, it's here to stay, but it's here to continue for the foreseeable future. Now, I want to present to you 20 South Atlanta champions, Atlanta Silverbacks. You weren't kidding That's about the size big of that trophy. trophy huh? That's Good a stuff. That is a tremendously, yeah, it's not Stanley Cup, but that's right up there. Big trophy, Georgie Kulov. Georgie had uh, some adversity this year with that red card. Anthony Takpa, another one with some red cards. We saw Gabriel Obatola with red cards. This team fought through everything, John. Fought through injuries. Kamar Brown wasn't here tonight. Kamar yep. had a lot of injuries this year. Tiago on the shoulders. Tiago and Paco came later on in the season, fit right in. Ali Janadala came in late. Ali came in. Ali was here early, had to leave, came back. Uh huh. You see Keita over there, number 34. Good stuff. I'll be honest, coming into this season, I was hopeful. Mm -hmm. I can't say I necessarily expected to win the conference in the end. Well, I mean, when you get into the playoffs, that's the goal. You just want to get into the playoffs. And then, as we've seen across the board in the NPSL, we've seen a lot happen in the postseason where Myrtle Beach gets knocked out. The Cosmos. Cosmos B gets knocked out. And... Once it happens, you get a six like New Jersey Copa coming in, and they're working in a final as well. So it's once you get into the playoffs, anything can happen. We've seen it, and that's just how it rolls sometimes. 2-1, your final score today, Middlesbrough. They prevail Atlanta.
lifts the trophy. We'll be back here at the pitch. We'll have some highlights and interviews in a matter of moments. And back at Silverbacks Park, 2-1 Middlesbrough FC prevails. And we have the coach, Paul Jenkins. You didn't score 13 goals the way you did in the first two matches, but all in all, your impressions. Uh, pleased, uh, very pleased with uh, the performance, certainly in the first half, because we didn't think that um, previous two games we'd done particularly well in the first half of both games. So to get a response like that in the first half, we thought, um, you know, we went in at half time and we were very complimentary about our players. And talk about Atlanta. I know certainly you're harping on your team, but Atlanta was game today. They came in and they fought hard, and they really, I thought, did a nice job. Yeah, they made it difficult for us. Um, you know, they, they're obviously used to the surface. Um, our lads have only trained on something like this. You know, generally we play on grass. So they, their boys were used to that, and uh, I thought they played that, uh, played the surf well, and uh, they made the game difficult, you know. So to get in at half time as we did, um, you know, we, we were pleased with uh, how our boys performed. Now Monday, you're going to get in the bus, go to Chattanooga, another highly competitive team in, in the NPSL here. What is the game plan just to continue to fine tune and get ready for that Premier League Two season? Yeah, um, you know, we'll have had uh, three games under our belt and um, what we will look to do in the next game is we'll probably look to get more minutes under people's belts. So first half today, we made another change at half time. We, you know, probably almost put a new team on, eight players came on. What we'll probably look to do on uh, on Wednesday against Chattanooga is we'll uh, definitely give the players 70 to 75 minutes, really. Now, is this trip something that you were really looking forward to? Is this something that they came to you? Yeah, they're around a lot, this guy. That they came to you and said, Coach, would you want to go to the States, or is this just planned? What was the dynamic of the whole deal with this? Um, well, we made contact. We uh, had contact from uh, from some, some people over here, and... Um, I think it was from the University of Tennessee, and um, they asked if we'd be interested. Um, I haven't been over here many times and started my coaching career here over here 20 odd years ago. Um, I knew it would be a great You're opportunity. You're not that old, come on. No, definitely not, no. <laughs> and uh, it was a good opportunity. Um, we, we felt as though we'd get a good test physically. And, um, you know, some of our players, you know, certainly haven't been outside of Europe really, so. We felt as though well coming across here was a different style of play. We knew uh, what we'd come up against, you know, physically developed players. As you saw first half, you know, I thought the, um, the Atlanta players were you know, very physical and competitive, and which is what we need for pre-season. So 
um, all in all, you know, it was a, it was a good opportunity that um, we gladly uh, took up. Certainly a business trip, obviously. Are the guys going to get to have any fun? Um, yeah, they play football. Um, <laughs> no, we, uh, we, you know, a part of the trip, you know, not only is it, you know, a business trip and that they're, they're out here to play football and, and do their job, you know, I want them to experience life in uh, in the US, you know, having, having done so myself, I know what a fantastic country this is and so I like the place to get some experience socially and we'll, uh, we'll do a few trips for them and, uh, you know, they'll, they'll enjoy some downtime, um, but, you know, the main focus is coming out here and playing football matches. Coach, thank you very much. All Appreciate it. You prevailed 2-1, and it was a good match. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you. Let's bring in Lewis. Lewis Maloney, one of the key cogs here, and just talk about the pitch, the experience here in Atlanta, and, and your 45 minutes overall. Yeah, it's certainly hard for us with the heat, and, like, the pitch, we're, we're not used to playing on the pitches. Like, we're usually on the grass a lot of the time. But like a bit of rain helped us, I think, to give it a bit of zip on the surface. So got it down playing first half quite well. And now, have you been to the states before? Is this uh, your first time here? First time, so I was really excited to come out here. Yeah, definitely. So you're going to be in Atlanta here. It doesn't seem like coach is going to let you go to the big city, though. No, uh, I think I'm only the one with 21 as well, so I could be. I should be out there, but <laughs> yeah. But well, I think we're going shopping tomorrow as well. So shopping trip after training, so it should be good for the boys. What are you looking to get? Girlfriend, mother, nah. some, something for somebody? Some nice train is what no one's got back over in England. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, what about so. the food here? Looking yeah. forward to anything to eating here? I've heard the McDonald's are quite big, like, so okay. I'd love, I'd love, I wouldn't mind one of them. Anything else? Pizza? Yeah, pizza would be nice, like. Overall about the match? You guys played well. Yeah. Atlanta played well. I yeah, think it was a good definition of a friendly in the end. Yeah, yeah, it was a tough game. They're all big physical lads, so it was hard for some of us, but... I think we, de we dealt with it well. We played well the first half. Maybe second half could have moved it a bit faster now and then, but same first half really as well. Lewis, but, we yeah. appreciate it. Congratulations yeah, on the win today and, and getting yourselves primed and ready for what could be a really good season for Cheers, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate Cheers. it. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back. Abraham Lansana is here. Highlights as well. 2-1. Middlesbrough prevails in the end. Back here at the pitch, Middlesbrough with the 2-1 victory over the Silverbacks. Anthony Takpa with the lone Atlanta goal. Continuing our conversations now, we bring in Abraham Lansana, the holding midfielder. All in all, they're a very good team. I think you guys played well. You played another solid 80 minutes. Let's hear your assessment of this match. Yeah, a blessed goal for this match because it was so physical for us that we, we play our game that we always play. And we did well in the game, I think. Our team is a, better, is a better team this season. And we show our ability to every team that we meet, even in Middlesbrough. They were, they were thinking that they was going to beat us easy. 
but we fought a lot. You fought very hard. Yes. Scored the goal, Anthony scored 1-1. Then for about 15 or 20 minutes, I think you guys may have had the better run of play. At what point did you say to yourself, we could win this match? Yes, I gotta believe that we can, we can win this match. Did you know it going in, all, all honesty? Coming in, you probably in a little bit of awe. It's Middlesbrough on the other side. But at what point, at what minute, did you, Abraham Lansana, say, ooh, this is getting fun? Yeah, it was, it was in the uh, 60 minute. I think we, 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 we get a goal, I think, in the 50 something minute. Mm -hmm. So now we were thinking how to get a second goal. But well, unfortunately, we don't have it. But we worked as a team. And you had a shot right in that far corner, right around the 18 in the corner. You just couldn't get the ball sort of on your foot accurately. Yeah, my touch was good for the first time, but the second to finish, I switched my, my body on the side while I saw the ball in the air. And now you look at this team. You didn't really know anybody three months ago. As a group, as a unit, you should be proud of what you guys did. Yeah, yeah, I tell the staff, thank you, and the team. To build a team in a quick minute is very difficult for the coach. But the coach tried to give everything to us because he feel that we have the talent and the ability to get, to get more in our, in our career. And not just Coach Silva, but also what Fode Dalla, the general manager, Alvin Glay, the managing partner as well. Yeah. Those guys really went above and beyond for all of you guys. Yeah, that is the branding behind the team and the branding behind the players, which is our manager. We call him FD as Fode. Yeah, he's our manager. So he tried to do everything for us, for us to go harder in our career. And even my local manager, Alvin, he tried to push me every single day. I'm and now, now going forward, you're just going to stay here for a little while and train, I assume, and, and see what comes your way? Yeah, I think I'm going to get a good stop soon. Everything's going to be okay soon for me. Very good. Yes. Well, Abraham, I didn't mention bananas. Until now, you and Joa, <laughs> go have your bananas. You, you deserved it. You played hard minutes. Yeah, I appreciate I appreciate everything I do for all this season. Good stuff. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll send it to John. He's going to give the highlights, and we'll wrap things up here at the park. John. All right, let's take Thank a look you. at the highlights and figure out where we got to this particular point in time. It was a 2-1 for the Silverbacks, losing to Burrow. And they're 23, and here's the PK. Takba in the 50th that evened it up at ones. Low corner, which we'd anticipated. Goalie goes one way, Takba the other, ties it up at ones in the 50th. He would leave shortly thereafter. Good work for him and his. Yes, almost instantaneously. And then you see just a lot of pressure that Burra puts on here. You'll see the work. Rice will go down. Came big, had a lot of opportunities to save the action there. And you see how it ends up. And it ends up with that, uh, with a 2-1 win on Yakupovich with the left foot would make it through. You'll see, once again, more opportunities here. Mistake on the back line. Once again, unfamiliar back lines. And Joa, Zhao there, with the shot off the outside of his foot. This is what we marveled at. Two passes, 70 yards complete. And then a work in. There's Jakubovic with the goal that would make it 2-1. That would end up as your final. 2-1 final score. But, you know, once again, you had a side that was challenged with the Silverbacks. You had a challenge going up against a side that has been together on the academy level, working their way through with a couple of faces that weren't Borough Academy players, but nevertheless, it was a great effort by the Silverbacks and a great showing in their third preseason match for Borough as they get ready for Chattanooga FC midweek. And overall, taking a look, just a final final look back at the Silverbacks. Mm -hmm. It was a really good season. South Atlantic champs, yes. what FD and Alvin and Coach Silva put together, nobody really expected. We had the comeback wins, the first match against Myrtle Beach, Axel Jewell scored in a great match. Then Atlanta started building 2-2 draw with with Carol with the discoveries. Then they won the three in a row. All come back basically except the revolution. It was a fun time, John. As usual with you, I had a blast. Yep. And I just I wasn't expecting this much this year. I didn't know what to expect. I said that last year as well. 
But this year there were playoffs, there was winning, there was a possibility of going on a road trip. And all in all, it was it was a breath of fresh air. And you look at it, and all you're looking at now is how the franchise goes forward from here. You've got that building block. And, and in a league like this that is as transitory as it can be in a lot of different locations, how does the franchise build from here? And you heard the words down on the field about how they're going to be around for a while. So it'll be an interesting off season and to see what the next steps are, that's gonna be the interesting part moving on from here. And hopefully a few guys will be back, but hopefully a lot of guys are not because the goal is to get them contract. Right. The poll as is Johanning, Lansana, Mitch Garcia, the captain. So hopefully we'll see them in, in bigger stages in, as we go forward. So we appreciate everybody hanging out with us all season long. The Silverbacks will be back as Fode Dallas says, ATP Productions, incredible job as usual. Rich Vogan, Mel Vogan, Eddie West. We had Ed here this year, just the entire gang. And for you, my friend, John Nelson, you I know, appreciate it. Big, well, big hug. Big well, I hug. see. Now, he breaks the fourth wall that, by that, doing that, something like right. that. That's all right. And, of course, you realize that the streak was broken today. So next year, I'm gonna. Well, I have. I can't wear this anymore. I, th this outfit, the streak has been broken at eight. Anybody have a lighter? <laughs> can, can we burn it now? Is that <laughs> fair? No. It's not polyester. You don't want that kind of flame. So we appreciate, as always, thank you guys for hanging out with us, Atlanta Silverbacks in 2017. Have a great night.